give us a Ben camp story when you think about Roethlisberger, all the camps, what your one of your funnest, fondest memories are? <laughs> I enjoyed going by Ben's room. You know, um, Ben is one of those guys, man, that brought the comforts of home to Latrobe. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he spared no expense, man, or amenity. Um, I walked in that room today and I laughed because Cam Hayward is in that room now. Um, but it's less, it's, it's less comfortable. I'll say that. Cam is somewhat of a caveman. <laughs> hey, That's at good. least Ben, at least Ben stayed in the dorm. Remember the story about Antonio Brown getting his own place yes. off campus? Yeah, and I know. And Mike Tomlin letting him do it. And that's, that's hey, these aren't these aren't these are dorms. It, I, oh, I, I know. I grew up going into these dorms Cinder with my block father. Walls, baby. Right. I mean, it's not it's not like this, you know, Hollywood story or oh man, these million dollar football players are being pampered. No, they're they're training camp. They're sharing toilets and living in some crappy room. And yeah, you got to do some you know do some decorating for sure to make yourself comfortable. On behalf of St. Vincent College, I have to say that our accommodations <laughs> are perfectly fine. I've been the in there. They're human. okay. <laughs> if you jam a couple of football players into it, it might get a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, anyway, buy or sell time. Steelers quarterback competition is Mitchell Trubisky's to lose. Are you buying or selling? I'm buying that. I am. I do think it's his to lose. One, I think, you know, he's he's got very – you know, very good talent, underrated talent, better than I think people give him credit for at times. And yeah, I, I just look at them. I don't think they're going to want to throw their rookie into the fray right away. So I feel like it'll be Mitchell Trubisky. Mike Tomlin said yesterday he's not going to micromanage or overmanage the situation. There's not going to be daily updates, throw by throw. And look, it's always easier to start with the veteran and move to the rookie if the veteran isn't getting it done and you think the rookie is ready. Once you go with the rookie, it becomes much more difficult to say, eh, we were wrong, we're going to sit him, and we're going to put the veteran in. That doesn't help the rookie's long-term growth. And, Chris, we've talked about this before. I remember when Ryan Tannehill was drafted by the Dolphins 10 years ago and he was third string. It's like, yeah, okay, sure he is. But they need the guy to build some confidence, and they need the team to believe in him. That was the point you made about Kenny Pickett showing up in Carolina if the Panthers had drafted him. Yeah. They start seeing that Sam Darnold throws the ball better and they're trying to force Kenny Pickett into the starting lineup. That doesn't work either. No, exactly right. It doesn't work. You know, and again, I, I think, you know, throwing wise, yeah, he he could be, you know, a little bit more rivaling a Mitchell Trubisky. We'll see. Trubisky, I mean, again, the preseason last year looked pretty clean. You know, we'll see if he's fixed some things and, and maybe learned a few new things up in Buffalo last year. You know, again, I think part of the bad look we've thought about Trubisky. Hey, Dill, it's 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 the the Bears' offense and what he was involved with. Nobody's like saying that was any good at all. It was not good. It was a tough situation. I'm I'm kind of like hopeful that he can kind of show us something this year and maybe you know stake his claim as kind of being a starting quarterback in the NFL. You mentioned Buffalo back in 2014. Instead of standing pat and taking Aaron Donald or Odo Beckham Jr., they traded up for Sammy Watkins. He's now in Green Bay. He's on the non-football injury list. Buy or sell? Watkins will be a top two receiver for the Packers this year. Yeah, I'm selling that all day long. I, I, I just, you know, I, I, I don't trust Sammy Watkins as far as dependability is concerned or being able to, again, Aaron Rodgers, you so into everybody being on the same page, and here's a guy that can't really practice or do that. So, no, one, Randall Cobb is still there, all right? I think Christian Watson uh, is going to be part of this conversation. Alan Lazard, I think, is going to be the guy they lean on maybe even the most early on because he's he's big, he's good, he's been there, you know. And then there's a guy like Amari Rogers going to you know, pop up, but yeah, it's not a lot of like you know big time names there. But I, I do think Christian Watson is the type of guy that will be one of the top two. And then it's just figuring out whoever it is. And my money's not on Sammy Watkins. No, I think Lazard contract year right. and mark it down. He's going to be a Bronco next season he's going to get reunited with Nathaniel Hackett in Denver and join that receiving core he has an incentive to have a big year on his way out the door and on his way to free agency Clyde Edwards a first round pick a couple of years ago the Kansas City Chiefs when they won the Super Bowl and had pick number 32 buy or sell he will live up to his first round status in his third NFL season sell sell it's not going to happen at least not from what I was expecting you know I was excited to, excuse me about what he can bring to the table you know, as a running back in the NFL. But 
He's one of those guys that was coming out, and I know you and I have discussed this, is he's more quick than fast. There's not enough straight speed with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He's quick and all that, and he's got a lot of strength for his size, but when there's a 20 yard gain straight away to be had, he can't turn on the afterburners to go get that. Jarek McKinnon looked really good, and they signed Daniel, I mean, uh, you know, Ronald, Ronald Jones. Jones. Right. So he's the guy I look at to be the guy to, to watch out for. Yeah, they brought Jarek McKinnon back recently. He was great in the postseason. Right. I'm I'm and excited for him. I'm surprised somebody else didn't snatch him. Yeah, frankly, right. So uh, they got Ronald Jones, they got Jarek McKinnon, and I think you're right. It's going to be tough for Clyde Ebersolaire. He's just not going to get the opportunities because they have enough guys to make that go. And obviously, with with uh, Tyree Kill gone, they they need their running backs to do a little bit more, especially in the passing game. Leonard Fournette with the Buccaneers. Yeah, weight will not be a factor. In week one, are you buying or selling? He reportedly showed up yesterday at 245. He's listed as 228. He reportedly was as heavy as 260, so he may have some more work to do in the sauna or elsewhere. Buy or sell, his weight's not going to be an issue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to buy it. I'm going to take it. You know, the, first, this is it, – it's an interesting topic. You know, I don't, want, I don't want Leonard Fournette at 260. All right, I got that. But as a guy that's seen these NFL running backs my whole life and been around them – I don't know if 228's right for him either. The hell with 228. Uh, that's what I would tell Leonard Fournette. Screw that. Who cares about 228 anymore? You're not outrunning anybody for 80-yard gains anymore. I say go 245 and just be a power back and run over people. I actually think that's going to extend his career. You know, him doing that. That's very funny. That's really good. Uh, that's cool that he has enough, you know, uh, sense of humor to make fun of himself. But I, I, I could see him going that route later in the career. We've seen guys do that before where they say, hey, I'm not as fast anymore. I'm going to be bigger, durable, break tackles, play that kind of football. That's what I would I'm, go for that, Leonard Fournette. His trainer recently said that after the offseason program, they put him in what the trainer called fat camp, and they had him in the sauna. And our guy Mike Ryan, the Sunday yeah, Night Football Sports Medicine Analyst, said that's not the way to do it. No. You're going to dehydrate yourself. And I've got Leonard Fournette on pulled hamstring, pulled quad, pulled calf muscle watch. Yeah, I Because if you. he has dehydrated himself to lose weight quickly, that's where it's not funny. You, you put yourself in a position as a highly – trained athlete to get potentially injured by losing weight too quickly and you know the, the days are gone of guys falling out of shape in the offseason and working their way it. back in right. they stay in shape all year long he plays with tom brady and he let himself get to 260 that's what surprised me more than anything else hi i'm mike tarico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from nbc sports